May God bless you as I greet you with the peace of God. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, the beloved of the Lord, we give God thanks for his faithfulness to us, for his mercy in times like these. We want to continue to acknowledge the goodness of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. Uh, we make these declarations. We, we say these praises because the Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. That's the book of Proverbs. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And why there is so, when, while, while there is so uh, much bad news in the world, we keep declaring by faith that God is good and his goodness fills the earth. We say that. In the, midst of the, in the midst of darkness and dark times. We say that in the midst of our own personal uh, dealings. Uh, the Bible says, uh, please, if you can mute for me, thank you, God bless you. Uh, we say that in the midst of um, uh, dark times, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 or John chapter 15 that in the world you will have tribulation. In me, you might have peace. But then he said, be of good cheer. That's our, that's our encouragement. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Okay, so faith in God, walking with God, does not deny the reality of a fallen world and so much confusion around us. But the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we maintain with our voices, with our praises, with our prayers, that God is good and his mercy endures forever. And of course, his mercy is his unfailing love. His mercy is not just what, he, what God does, but what God longs to do. And God wants a people, he desires a people that will continue to declare his truth, to preach his truth, to teach his truth, to praise his truth, to pray his truth um, in the earth realm. Uh, and that's why no silent believer, well, I should say the church is not called to be silent. The true church is the church that declares, that opens their mouths. In fact, uh, we, we, we pray the Lord's prayer and Jesus, when, he's, when he was teaching his disciples to pray, he said, pray this way. And he said, say it. Not just think it, say it. If you can speak, if you have a voice, you say it because words have power. And that's why uh, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God bless you. Uh, for those of you that are on the platform already and for those that are on their way, we want to submit this class uh, to God tonight. And we're going to ask God to touch our ears, our hearing, uh, to touch our hearts. We are asking God for two kinds of anointing tonight. The anointing to give and then the anointing to receive. There's an interplay between us. So all of us are working together. And when those two anointings, that is the anointing to give and then the anointing to receive, those two anointings intermingle, they interrelate so that there will be an anointing to produce. And this is what, this is what God's will for us is, according to James, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers thereof because it is then that we become active recipients of all that God has promised for us, all that God has promised to us in the great plan of redemption. God needs a people. He wants a people who, who are called by his name and who know him in the pardon of their sins in the power of the resurrection. And the old Daniel um, in his book said, they that know their God shall rise and do exploits in his name. And so that's why a platform like this, or when we come to class, when we come to church, we are watering the seeds of our future and we are empowering our position in God, in Christ, 
uh, for our own personal lives and for the purpose of serving our present generation. And we, by so doing, we justify our existence on earth. Dear God, we thank you and we praise you. We are prompt to do it with our minds, with our thoughts. I pray just now for those that are on the platform, those that are on their way, that you would center us, settle us in your presence, in your peace, in your anointing, in your grace, in your comfort, in your hope. I pray, Father God, that you would settle us, that you would manifest your presence in our midst. We know that you are present. You are present all, always and all the time. But we ask you for a special manifestation of your presence tonight in, in prayer, in praise, in teaching, in preaching and exhortation. I ask, oh God, that you would allow me to experience the moment of the teacher. Qualify me, oh God, qualify me by your grace. Qualify me, oh God, by your mighty hand that the words that I speak shall not be mine, but thine for the edifying of this thy people. I pray that you would heal those who need healing, that you would bring answers to the troubles that people face, solutions. We thank you that you can do all that in a matter of moments beyond our ability and beyond our understanding. And we believe you for that. I pray that you would speak to us where we are individually, that you would tell your word and break it down into bite-sized bite pieces so that all of us can be fed on your truth. Uh, you know how to, you speak the language of each and every one of us, no matter where we are, intellectually, spiritually, physically, psychologically, uh, emotionally, wherever we are, you speak our language. And though we, we, there's one voice, you divide those voices, you divide this voice to speak to us in the way that we need it on an individual basis. So we wanna praise you and we wanna thank you for that. We submit this class to you now. Uh, we ask you for your prayer power, pr power in prayer, that as we pray at the conclusion or during the course of this class and this teaching, that you would divinely intervene in our affairs. We give you thanks in advance. And if we would do this, if you would do these things and more, we promise not to take any credit for it, but we shall go down from this Zion, giving you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. We're dealing with now a, brand, a new series, a very powerful series, one of the most unique series that I've done. We call this Through the Bible. You could label that in so many different ways, through the Bible or through each book of the Bible, briefly uh, looking at each book of the Bible and drawing out brief lessons, brief lessons, brief encouraging, faith building, faith triggering, hope giving, huh, encouraging, comforting lessons from each book of the Bible. Now that sounds like it would take a long time, but not necessarily because we're not going to go into uh, in-depth, uh, you know, in-depth studies or we would never get through. Uh, we're going to look at key verses in each book of the Bible and some lessons that, you know, that I feel would be encouraging uh, to us as I'm praying over it and lessons and verses of scripture that will be encouraging to us. I'm using scripture to compare with scripture. The greatest commentary of the Holy Bible is scripture itself. So we compare scripture with scripture. Though, so this is going to be a scriptural journey. So I encourage you, church, I encourage you, class, to get your Bibles if you can get a translation like mine, which is the authorized version or what we call the King James and also the New King James. I like to use that. And then, of course, it will we will flower out into other translations like the, like the NIV, the New International Version, sometimes the New Living Translation, the NLT, and other translations that I will let you know about. Um, so we, I'm trying not to deal with more than two lessons for each book. Sometimes it would just be one lesson and sometimes maybe we'll deal with more than one book for the shorter books. 
or however the Lord leads us and guide us into this, we may deal with two books at a time, especially those that relate to one another. Uh, but you'll see how it flows. It's going to be it's going to be very powerful. I believe I'm trusting that it will be very powerful, and we will not necessarily deal with it in order, because we want to stay open to the to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But we will check off each book uh, as we deal with it. So of course I I dealt I'm dealing with the first book of the Bible um, for the last couple of weeks, the book of Genesis. Uh, our key verse for the book of Genesis is one of the most powerful verses in all of the Bible, and that's Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then we underline those four, first four words of the Bible, in the beginning, God. That's very powerful. That name, God, in Hebrew is the Hebrew name Elohim. And Elohim speaks of God as the creator or the, or, or the strong, mighty creator, the God who takes nothing and out of nothing, he makes something. But again, those first four words of the Bible really, really hope, really embrace the entire biblical text because it tells us that God, before anything was, I'm underlining the first four words, in the beginning, God, they tell us that before anything ever was, God is. I get happy already, and I see as other people are coming on, I almost want to start over, but that's okay. We can. This is being recorded, so we can listen to it later. In the beginning, God, before what, what does this teach us? Before anything ever was, God is. So he is in the beginning, but because there would be no beginning without God, God is before the beginning. Now that's powerful. So God began the beginning. And as I, as I was I was, as I was paraphrasing, paraphrasing one author, I love the way he, he put it. Um, you can't take God by surprise. You can't anticipate him because God is always there in the beginning. Before humanity existed, God acted. Before humanity even knew they needed God, God already got up from his throne and decided to step down into time to rescue humanity from, the, from, that, from that fallen nature, from that fallen reality. And so it's very powerful. It should be, it should be comforting and encouraging, encouraging to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that nothing you deal with, nothing you have dealt with or will deal with takes God by surprise or will take God by surprise because God is God all by himself. And if God is, I don't even like to use the term if God existed, because existed is a kind of designation for our human understanding, but God is even greater than existence. He's more than existence because there would be no existence without God. And that's why we, 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 we wanna renew our minds with the word because it encourages us. It trains our spirits to trust God when there appears to be no reason to trust God in the natural. When everything is haywire, we proclaim, we continue to declare, we continue to preach that God is in absolute ultimate control and he is in charge of his creation. He doesn't create and then steps back from his creation. He is always involved in his creation. So um, that tells us that if God is was in was if God is present when the beginning began, then he is before the beginning. And if God could create <laughs> all that we see, especially when we look up in the sky, and even all the technology and science and poetry and writing and all the things that we see, buildings and just existence itself. 
could not have come or could not have come into being if God did not give humanity intelligence and intellect and genius to, to uh, create these things over time. And so that tells us those first four words again, that's our key verse for the book of Genesis. Uh, they tell us that God is omnipotent. Omni, it's, it's, a, it's a compound word. Omni means all, everything, and unlimited. So he's all powerful. That's what omnipotent means. And potent comes from the word potential, which means what I can do is unlimited from God's standpoint. What I can do is unlimited because, because potential is not what you've done. Potential is what you can do. But when we speak of the when we speak of God or the Lord as omnipotent, meaning his potential to do, to work, to act uh, is unlimited because he's God. God has no beginning and no end. So he is all powerful. Think of that when you pray. Think of that when you when you face the world's challenges, when you deal with your own difficulties and frustrations. Not, when we speak of God being omnipotent, we also refer to New Testament passages or verses that speak of the fact that with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible because he is all powerful. There's nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot handle. And often we say there's nothing that God can't do. The only thing he can't do is lie. He, God cannot lie. Amen. But even when we say that, <laughs> you know, we say that in our limited understanding of who, uh, of how God can act. Uh, God is a mystery. God reveals himself, but God is a mystery because he is eternal. He's more than eternal. He has no beginning and no end. So the mystery of God will always be a mystery to some degree because he is eternal. We will always be discovering new realms about God. That's why no matter what we discover about the Bible, no matter what insight and illumination God gives to us, there's always something new and fresh and powerful to discover. And that's why we ought to spend time in the presence of God. God being omnipotent, all powerful, also speaks of God in the beginning, God, God being omniscient. Omniscient means he knows everything. There's nothing that God does not know about the past, the present, and the future, any day, any time, any place, anywhere. God is all knowing. He knows everything and every detail of everything. Nothing is outside of his knowledge. David said it, if I take the, in Psalm, uh, what is it, it's Psalm 10, 103, the, the verse escapes me, uh, but he said, if I take the wings of the morning and fly, not Psalm 103, it's not Psalm 103, I believe, but he said, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, in other words, if I go scuba diving into the deepest sea, he's there. In other words, there's no place you are not abiding. Well, if God is all knowing, then the fact that he's all knowing, it gives rise to the fact that he's also omnipresent. Because you'd have to be, and that means everywhere at the same time. Well, you would have to be everywhere at the same time to know everything. It is inconceivable. It exceeds the understanding and the intellect of the finite mind, how God can be everywhere at the same time, knowing everything there is to know about the past, the present, and the future, and he contains it within his being. Do you understand how, comfort, how comforting uh, that is to you? Yes, Psalm 139. Thank you. Do you see how we work as a community? I knew somebody was going to bring that up. Thank you, uh, dear Sister V. Yes, yeah, Psalm 139. Uh, uh, sometimes I know the address. You know, sometimes it escapes my memory. Uh, and, 
and then uh, sometimes I know the verse and then I'm not sure about the address. Um, so Psalm 139, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. Uh, no matter, there is no place you are not abiding. And David was in Psalm 139, he was writing that Psalm uh, as an encouragement during the Babylonian captivity because when they, they, when they were in Babylon, the Babylon said, well, why don't you sing one of the Lord's songs? You know, and they said, well, we're, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna hang our hearts. We're not gonna praise anymore. David began to come to a revelation that God is not localized in one place. God is not, I mean, though for our purposes, he was in the temple in Jerusalem and the tabernacle in the wilderness so that we could go to a place to meet God and engage the high priest would engage the Shekinah glory of God very carefully. But David came to a revelation that if I go to the north, the south, the east, and the west, God is there. Now, I want you to be encouraged that whatever you're listening to on the news, whatever's happening in your family, whatever's happening in your body, God is there. And then think about the fact that he's there, he, he's, he's present, and that he knows everything about that, you're, that we're dealing with, and what's happening in the world. And then here comes omnipotence. There's nothing that God cannot handle. There's nothing that God cannot heal. There's nothing that God cannot give us hope in the midst of. That's your all powerful, all knowing, everywhere present, beloved God. I'm telling you, if God was not love, he would be dangerous. And what I mean by that is like we'd, we would constantly, we should bow in reverence. We should bow in reverence and fear before him. But reverence and fear for the New Testament believer and those who are in relationship with God means that we, we, we are exposed to the truth of his word. We internalize it and realize it that God is awesome. In other words, there's... While you're trying to figure it out, as the songwriter said, God has already worked it out and will work it out. To us, he will work it out. But in God's mindset, in God's view, he's already worked it out. That's why most of our praying should be thank you. I wonder if anybody could practice that right now. Somebody put in the chat, thank you, Lord. Don't even, don't even try to figure out the details. Just say thank you, Lord. Lord. Don't figure out how God's going to heal your body. Just say, thank you, Lord. Don't, don't, don't try to figure out how God's going to make a way where there is no way. Just say, thank you, Lord. Don't, don't even try to figure out how God's going to heal your soul or open that door or preserve your life or fulfill your purpose on the earth, or renew your youth, or quicken your bones, or take that disease out of you, or give you a miracle, just say, thank you, Lord. Do you know how powerful that one statement is? Thank you, Lord, that your truth, your justice, your righteousness, your mercy, and your grace will prevail in the earth, in this nation, in my community, in my family, in my home, in my business, on my job, in my body, in my mind, and in the calling and the mandate upon our lives. Amen? Guess what? Because in the beginning, God, before anything ever was, God is. Before anything ever was, God is. Amen. Now, so there you go. We're going to look at a couple more verses regarding Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Because remember, this is a scriptural journey. So your, your faith gets fed by the word of God. And that makes you a recipient of the blessings that God promised to Abraham. Because remember, we, we defined it. You know, we have to give this really in brief portions because we'll never get through. And the way Minister Burley 
teachers sometimes, I just get excited about a matter and then we just go on and on and on and on. I mean, it's a blessing. Uh, and then sometimes the Holy Spirit is reaching out to somebody on the platform that needs a word, a rhema, a word exactly tailored for that moment. And that's what I mean by staying open to the Holy Spirit, because I'll have my text, I'll have my notes, I'll have my manuscript, I'll have my outline and all that, and all that, uh, much more information than time. But then God loves you so much that he will reach out exactly where you are physically and emotionally in your relationships, on your job, whatever the case may be. Many of you are prayer warriors. What do I mean by prayer warriors? You won't quit praying like Jacob. You won't stop praying no matter what. That's a prayer warrior because what does a warrior do? A warrior fights. And, it's, and, and when everyone else is giving up, a warrior will keep on fighting. And that's what a prayer warrior is. We keep praying up till the midnight hour. When there's no light and everybody else is asleep or giving up, we keep on calling on the name of God until change comes. That's what Job said. I'm going to wait till my change comes. Why? Why do we pray? Because we deal with a God who specializes in things that are thought impossible. He can do what no other power can do. And that's why we got to wait on him. That's why we got to trust him. He, the, the, the hymn that said, I will not be denied. Um, when, when there's so many reasons to give up, said, I will not be denied because Christ paid the ultimate uh, uh, price to redeem our lives, to purchase us to buy us back and bring us back to oneness with the Father God. We are grateful to that. So we, we gave a synopsis of, of Genesis in a very short, uh, in very short terms. You can look at the book of Genesis in this way. As we talk about, it's the book of beginnings, the book of creation, the book of the, the beginning of nations, relationships, art, literature. I mean, the list goes on. But generally, when you're studying the book of Genesis, you have some main characters. So what are we dealing with in the book of Genesis? Just gives you a, a nice overview of, of, our, of our study when the, the book of Genesis, when you're reading it on your own. But you, what you find in the book of Genesis is the creation. That is animal life, plant life, human life, the fall, the flood, Noah and his flood. Well, not Noah and his flood, but Noah and the flood when, when he got those eight souls together and built him an ark, and then the flood came. So you have creation, the fall, the flood, nations, and then here's the key figures in the book of Genesis. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And the reason why we mention those, those are the main figures and all the lineage that comes from their lives. It was because through Abraham, Isaac, uh, and Jacob, that the lineage of the Messiah, that the line of the Messiah and the heirs of the promise, the promise of being blessed, that line of the Messiah comes through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the powerful lessons that we learn from the life of Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Joseph, the, the book of Genesis ends with, with uh, Joseph. But Abraham, God called Abraham, not when he was a righteous character. Abraham was a stargazer. Uh, that means so many different things. But he came to Abraham. What made Abraham unique? What made Abraham a recipient of God's promise and God's blessings? Is because Abraham decided to believe God's promise. He decided to believe God's word. And the Bible says it was accounted to him for righteousness. But here's the powerful lessons, the real quick, really quickly, the powerful lessons that you learn from these four great figures. Abraham, God gave a promise to Abraham that he would be um, the father of many nations and that through him, the nations of the world would be blessed. But, and, and so the nations of the world will come through Abraham, but this is so interesting. God promises Abraham that you're gonna have a son. And then through that son, other nations would come.
But here's the really interesting thing, and here's the encouraging thing. God waits <laughs> till it is impossible in the natural for Abraham or Abram at that time and Sarah to have a child. God purposely waited until Abraham was about 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old until it was impossible for it to happen in the natural and yet God made a promise. God worked miraculously uh, in, in the body of Abraham and Sarah so much so that you had a that an individual wanted uh, Sarah for his harem. Don't you tell me God can't renew your youth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying tonight. God is a youth renewer. He will renew your loop. He will renew renew your youth. Believe God for it. He will quicken your bones. Now, if God could quick quicken Sarah at 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 ninety years old. To where Abimelech, I think it was, wanted her for him, his harem. I mean, you God is in the business. I mean, we have all these different things to restore youth and to maintain beauty. Nobody can quicken and renew youth like God can. Uh, Psalm 103, David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction. Did you hear it? Who crowns thee with loving kindness. Did you hear it? Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I, I, listen, I speak youth renewal upon you. Why not? Because the Bible said, "They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength." See, you you know what the you know what the world needs today, and you know what the church needs today. Waiters on the Lord. Don't walk around complaining all the time. Oh, I'm having a senior moment. Oh, I'm having my body. Oh, my body. You know, an organ recital. Everything in your body's wrong. I'm not saying don't. If you got pain, don't talk about it. I'm not saying that. But also trust God. Trust God to touch that body and to renew your youth, amen. So praise God, that's good right there. So uh, then Isaac, then Isaac now, Isaac comes along and then from Isaac, Jacob, Esau, Isaac gives birth to Esau and Jacob. G God gives a promise to Jacob. The Bible said, God said, Esau, have I hated Jacob I love. And it's interesting because when he was born, <laughs> Uh, Jacob was holding on to Esau's, they were twins, holding on to Esau's foot. And so that's why the name actually means heel catcher. So it's, it's interesting that J Jacob lived up so much to his name. And that's why names have very powerful spiritual value. That's why don't let the world name you. Don't let your circumstances name you. Jacob lived a good portion of his life before God changed him as a cheat, as a liar, as a swindler. He cheated Esau out of the birthright because he lied to his father and made him think that, you know, a father will bless in those times will bless their children. And so he, he lied and made Isaac think that he was, that he was Esau. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, the key message to this is that when Jacob finally came to the end of himself, when he was running for his life, he came to the end of himself. I found out you can't run from, did you know you can't run from yourself? You can't run from yourself. I tried to run from me a lot of times. I ran way down the block, a couple miles ahead and then turned right and ran a couple miles that way and then turn another way, trying to run from myself. And every time I tried to run, my, run from myself, I ran right into myself. Can I get a witness? David tried it, Jonah tried it. But you know, God is so loving. He loves us too much to leave us the way we are. And that's why uh, 
Philippians chapter one and verse six says, he who began the good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. But here's what I love. God changes you, dear sister. God changes you, my brother. And Jacob, here's the lesson. So the promise comes to Abraham. Abraham gives, uh, God gives Abraham and Sarah a miracle. He does it according to promise, not because of what we can do in the natural. Um, Jacob comes to the end of himself. And he says, I can't take it anymore. And he told God, the Bible says he wrestled with God to the breaking of the dawn. And here's the statement that should be our statement. I will not let you go until you bless me. Did you hear me? We're talking about the blessing of the Lord. I will not let you go. We give up too easily and we give up too quickly. Oh, I know nobody can tell our story like we can tell our individual personal stories. No one can tell it like we can. No one knows the emotional turmoil that we can. And even when it feels like God himself has denied us, Lord, are you hearing me? Where are you? But we still say like Jacob, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God, and God gave Jacob a name change, a name change. He went from Jacob, the swindler and cheat to Israel, Israel. He went from a pauper to a prince. And God not only changed his name, but changed his nature. And the whole Hebrew nation came from his lineage. Amen. So when we when we hold on to God's unchanging hand, when we hold on to God's unchanging word, God will come through for us. I often think of sometimes, I encourage myself at times with this, because sometimes we are right on a collision course with our miracle. And the angel of the Lord is about to drop that thing in our hands that we've been waiting for sometimes for years and we start letting our mouth mess up our miracle we start to say i'm not going to be intense in prayer anymore we we start to get distracted we get a little lethargic when it comes to reading the scriptures and getting in the word of god and we kind of let go god is merciful but we ought to say like jacob i will not let you go until you bless me Come what may, I will not let you go, God, until you bless me, because you are Yahuwah. That's the name of promise, Yahweh. Sometimes we say Jehovah, but it is the covenant name of promise. When God makes a promise, he cannot lie. We ought to hold God's promises up to him. And God, God changed his name of the breaking overnight. He changed him. And that's what happened to us the moment we come to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.17 becomes a reality. It doesn't take all night. And in fact, in the twinkling of an eye, God changes us from death to life and from death, from death to life and from spiritual slavery to freedom, from darkness to light. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's be like Jacob and hold on to God's word, hold on to God's promise and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the list goes on even with Joseph. God gave Joseph a promise. He gave him dreams and visions. Uh, um, um, Jacob was loved by his father more than, more than the rest. We speak of the coat of many colors um, that, that his father put upon him. Um, and he loved him. That speaks of favor. Well, can I tell you something, sister and brother? God put a code of favor upon you. Yep. Yes, he did. Code of many colors, variegated beauty of God's uh, grace and favor. Variegated means there's so many different ways his uh, favor can be manifested. It's inexhaustible. And Jake, Joseph was lied on. His own family. His own brotherhood lied on him. Uh, Jacob, jo Jacob. <laughs> oh, I'm getting tickled here. Jacob, I'm thinking of Jacob and Joseph at the same time. That's a new name. I wonder if there's a name like that in the Bible, Jacob. Well, his brothers lied on him uh, because Joseph spoke a little too soon 
maybe a little too arrogantly that he would be a leader over his brothers, over his family. And God gave him an authentic, it was an authentic vision and God gave it to him, but he shared it too quickly. If God gives you a revelation about something, if God gives you a dream, if God drops something into your heart, don't speak too soon. Okay, because often we're surrounded by jealousy. And then even when God gives you a vision or a dream, a calling and a mandate, remember God is working on that thing. He matures us and works on us and develops us to handle what he has for us. And so we're in a constant state of, pre of preparation for what God has already prepared for us. We just should submit to that. But anyway, he was lied on. He was sold into slavery. Uh, then somehow he, he got into a man named Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife, wife lied on him because as Potiphar's wife was making advances, advances towards Joseph, Joseph resisted it and he ran. And then Potiphar's wife lied on him. When they found out about the lie, they thought it was the truth. And then um, Joseph winded up in prison. But God still dealt with Joseph in prison. That's the beauty. God gave Joseph favor in prison. God will give you favor right where you are. I don't care how locked up you, you have been or how locked up in different areas you seem to be right now or whatever prison circumstance will try to approach you in the future. There is no limit with God. You may be limited in the moment because when you're in prison, you're limited. But you know you can be in the prison of your mind, the prison of circumstances, locked up in a lot of ways. But God's not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you. And the Bible says that people knew that God was with Joseph. That's a prayer of mine. I say, Lord, let people know that you were with me as they knew that you were with Joseph. I pray that for all of us. I pray, God, that you would that you will cause people to know that you are with us as you as they knew, as the people knew you were with Joseph. God gave Joseph a gift of interpreting dreams. One day, the greatest political leader, Pharaoh, had a dream. Nobody could interpret it. Finally, people who were in prison, the prison guards knew that Joseph had a gift, and they reported to the king, to Pharaoh, that there was a man in prison who could interpret your dream. Well, Joseph did, and as a result of the gift of God making room for Joseph, Joseph ended up in prison. Pharaoh's palace, in the king's palace, and Pharaoh put that man second in command. So God took him from slavery to the pit, from Potiphar's house to the palace, and God will do that and can do that for each one of us, no matter where we are and no matter how long it takes, God will be with us, and the gift that God has given us will make room for us. So continue to trust God and go through in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever God, whatever God has for you, it will speak. So thank God um, for what God does through the biblical characters in the book of Genesis. He will do the same for us. Uh, those are the lessons we learn. Let me give you one verse, uh, just two more quick verses before we pray. So we're speaking of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Romans 1 and 20 says this. For since Romans chapter one, let me say it a little slower, verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that means God's attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. That's the new King James. In other words, he's saying that the world is without excuse because the very creation that we see is preaching, is teaching, is evangelizing that there is a divine creator, amen. So remember, God created the heavens and the earth and then the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Everything begins with God and everything fulfills God's purpose for his glory. And remember this, how did God create the creation? He said, let there be. So God speaks, he creates, and he blesses with his word. You, children of Abraham, because you believe God's word, you're the recipients of the blessings of Abraham, because you believe God's word. So rem remember, 
God works by his word. He works through the power of his word. And the same word that God used in the book of Genesis, he also works in our lives. It can work in our lives. Let me read you one verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Paul is speaking to the church at Thessalonica and he says, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word, when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Let me quit there right now because I got a lot of other verses to deal with, but we want to pray for a moment for the sake of time. But that embraces. I want you to write that verse down. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse 13. That embraces all that we've talked about, about the book of Genesis, um, God creating creation with his word, blessing with his word through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. In fact, in one of the Psalms, the Bible says, um, the word of the Lord tried Joseph. In other words, it tested him. God gave Joseph a promise. And even though that promise appeared to be delayed, Joseph was not denied the promise of God. I often pray this prayer. I often quote this. Uh, Psalm 119 and verses 49 and 50, David says this. He says, remember the Lord to you. Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction for your word has quickened me. That's King James, but it means for your word has given me life. This is my comfort and my affliction for your word has quickened me. So the word gives you hope and it gives you life for whatever you are facing in this life. Hold on to that verse. Amen. Uh, real quickly, Psalm no, let me stop there. Let me just stop there. Well, let me give it to you. Psalm, one, Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3, because we're going to the book of Leviticus or another book next week. And we will always refer back to uh, other lessons for the sake of continuity and remember the Bible as a whole, but just for tonight. So let me give you this real quick. Uh, Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3. Listen to it. This is powerful. I feel I need to give this to you. Psalm one, Psalm 19, not 119, Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3. This validates it. So at least get those key verses. The first Thessalonians verse that I gave you, and this, these verses, Psalm 19, verses 1 to 3. The heavens declare, this is what we read in Romans 1 and 20. The heavens declare, they tell, they preach, they teach the glory of God and the firmament shows the handy shows his handiwork in other words the very creation speaks of a divine designer day unto day oh listen to the beauty of the, the poetry day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge the very creation is telling a story telling a message preaching the gospel day and night there is no speech this is verse 3 there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In other words, no matter who may try to deny it or ignore it, the very fact that we are alive, the very fact that we can walk and talk, the very fact that the law of gravity is in effect, the very fact that there are clouds and heavens and a sun and stars, the very fact that there are cars and trees and buildings came from the fact that there is an intelligent designer behind all that we see. In other words, we are represented in more than we could see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, because what we see, touch, taste, smell, and hear represents and preaches and speaks of a God who is all-powerful, who is all-knowing, and who is everywhere at the same time. Let this encourage you as we continue through our journey through the Bible with powerful lessons and encouraging lessons from each book. So you got your first book, the book of Genesis. Now let's pray. 
that the God of all beginnings, uh, we have a couple of minutes to pray. If you want to put your prayer request in the chat, I'm going to pray generally over it. But putting it in the chat is like laying it at the altar. You don't have to put it in the chat because you can speak to God right now. I'm the minister for the hour. So I take your request, not having to know it because God knows it. But as you're releasing it, you may put in the chat a name. You don't even have to put the prayer about what we're about what you want to pray about, but however you want to express it, you can put it in the chat or just whisper it right where you are because God hears it and God knows it. And as you're doing that, I'm taking your request right now by faith and lifting it up to God. And as you're releasing it to the Lord with your whisper, even if you've whispered it to God a hundred times, 200 times, God loves when you continually bring before him what you are at, what you are are asking God to do and to help you with and what you are trusting God for and what you are believing for and what your need is. You are not outside of faith bringing it to God again. When we bring it to God again, we're not saying that God didn't hear us the first time we prayed. We're simply reminding God that we are trusting you with this matter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank God for those names. See how powerful that is? Just the names. And we know, uh, Sister V, the details of why you presented those names, God knows it. And I can just as sure as God is God of his word and not a man that he should lie. He is taking that that you presented and he's dealing with it right now, even before we pray. So as you're whispering it right now before God, whatever the matter is, if you're putting in the chat, that's fine. But whisper it to God. I believe you're doing that right now. And we're taking the request right now. And Father, I take every prayer request for my sisters and my brothers right now. And those who will listen to this later, we lift these needs up to you. As they laid it out by faith, as they're whispering it, as they're writing about it, as they're talking to you about it right now, I set myself in agreement with them. Because you said if two of if two or more agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. And so, Father, we present these needs to you right now. I thank you for dealing with every individual request, every individual need, meeting it, looking at it, dealing with it, and in your timing, in your, and in your timing, and in your great wisdom, we thank you that every need is met, every prayer is answered. You either say yes or something better, or wait a little while, but we thank you that you will not deny us because you cannot deny yourself. Even when we are faithless, you remain faithful. We give you thanks and praise for answering our prayers. For we ask these things in the name of the one that you said to pray in. And in the name of the one that by whose stripes we are healed, we speak of Jesus. Yea, even the very Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. I trust that you got something out of this word um, tonight, uh, that you would look at those verses of scriptures, be encouraged by it, uh, go over. If you took notes, go over it again. You can look at it again, um, listen to it again later or look at it again later. And so I pray that God would bless you now. I speak blessing to your life, spirit, soul, and body and everything that concerns you. And God, I ask that you would grant us unto us your apostolic benediction as we say may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit rest rule and abide upon you the people of god henceforth now and forevermore in the name of jesus in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. Now may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. It's done. Father, we thank you for Pastor Cooper. We thank you for all the ministers. We thank you for all the leaders and teachers and preachers and feeders and musicians and all those that serve in various states of, uh, of, of ministry. 
And we just thank you for tonight. We commit everything into your hands tonight in Jesus' name. If you want to unmute so the church can say amen, if you've got something out of tonight, you can say amen and bless the name of the Lord. God amen. bless you. Amen. 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 Thank amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father God. God bless you. Glory amen. tonight. I'm expecting my miracle. And my miracle is expecting me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for uh, Sister Edwina right now. Lord, I thank you for touching her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you for touching every organ, ligament, cell, muscle, every tendon, every bone, and every particle of Sister Edwina's body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, inside and out. Hallelujah. Touch that body and fest your healing power. We believe for a touch now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it. Amen and amen. amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. amen. Bless you tonight. Thank you. God bless you. See you brother. next week. Come on back. Praise God willing. Amen.